Flow-through fixturing process involves using a sheet of MDF, pulling vacuum through it, and then putting a piece of plywood or other panel material on top. And the vacuum pulls through there and holds the parts down. But we have to do some things to the MDF panel first. When they create MDF, they basically put smaller particles on both surfaces, and that makes it smoother. And we need to get rid of those, and the process is called fly cutting. So we're going to machine off about 40 thousandths of that top material on both sides, and that leaves us a porous core, and that makes the vacuum flow through. Another advantage of that also is that because you fly cut it on the machine, it lines up perfectly with a spindle. That's not normally a problem with shop saver machines because our tables are actually cut with that spindle. Now let's take a look at how we actually do that in the software. Okay, this is VCAR Pro. Let's create a new file. Now over here under job setup, it's gonna be single-sided. All right, now our material is gonna be 49 by 97 because that's what size a four by eight MDF sheet is. Now keep in mind that if your machine table is a different size, you may be using a different size material. Okay, the thickness of the material is 0.75. We're actually gonna to touch it off to the top of the material and the lower left corner is gonna be the origin. That's what makes the program line up correctly with the machine. I normally have my modeling resolution as high as it'll go and we'll hit OK. OK, now, what we really want to do is create a pocketing tool path. Let me show you how you do that. Let's go over here and let's create a pocket. But before we do that, we actually need some geometry. We don't have geometry here, so let's close that and let's actually create a rectangle. And you can just do this. You can just hit apply and close it and then come over here if you want and resize it. There's more than one way to do that. So let's just say I want it to be 49 by 97. Okay, I hit apply. And then we'll close that. And we hit that align icon right there. Now that's it. Now that gives us some geometry. So now we'll go back to our pocketing command. Okay, the first thing we'll do is clear out any tools that might be on there. Uh, the depth of cut's going to be 40 thousandths, 0 0.04. And let's talk about that a little bit. 40 thousandths will take that top surface off, and that should get us down into the porous material, so 40 thousandths. The tool I'm going to be using is actually uh, a two and a half inch fly cutter. We'll select that. Um, now we're going to create a pocket, and but we want to actually create a raster, all right? So I want it to go back and forth. And here's where the allowance comes in. If I don't do anything else, let me show you what the problem's gonna be. All right, if I, if I just hit, let's call this fly new, meaning this is what you use for a new, new spoil board, you calculate it. Well, here's what's gonna happen. All right, if we click on this, you see you end up with the corners here. So what happens is you click on that and the problem is it doesn't really do the whole board. So let's fix that. We'll go back up here, we'll open this back up. Now, one of the things I wanna do is I do not want to leave a profile pass on the end, all right? So, but I, what I can do is I can do a pocket allowance. Okay, if you put a positive number in there, the pocket gets smaller. If you put a negative number, it gets larger. I'll show you what to do. All right, so take, uh, it's gonna be a negative. Uh, the radius of the tool will be 1.25, add a quarter to that, so negative 1.5, and then we'll, calculate based on that. And now you see what happens when we actually simulate that. And we look at it like we did a while ago. we we'll turn that back on. And you see now we've totally covered the sheet so we don't have to worry about that. Now let's go back and let's look at which direction did we actually do this. Uh, let's turn this back off. Okay, in this case, it's gonna go back and forth. If you didn't like that, if you wanted to go front and back, there's a simple setting here, and that's right here. If I put in 90 degrees, all right, and we'll reset that. Now when you preview it, see it goes back and forth. Uh, that's pretty much personal preference. I actually like uh, doing it the other way. So let's go back and set that to zero. Once again, that's what determines that though. Also. Let's go ahead and ramp our plunge move in and, and ramp that at about 1.5. And we'll recalculate that. And we'll reset that. And that should be our program.
Now that came out pretty good. Let's take another look at that. Perfect. Perfect. All right, now, so that's a program that I've created. It's called, I call it Fly New. Now, this is what you run when you're creating a, a new spool board. So I'm taking off 40 thousandths off each surface. Now, let's say that you've been running the spool board a while and you've got some grooves cut in here. You know, ideally, we're not cutting it deeper than 10 thousandths in there, but eventually you get it messed up. And I need a new surface. So the easiest way to do this is to take Fly New, make a copy of it. Okay, I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna make one change. I'm gonna change this to 15 thousandths. If I'm cutting through at 10 thousandths, if I take off 15 thousandths, I should get a new surface. And the only thing I'm gonna change it is fly O. All right, so now there's a tool path. It'll look the same in the simulation, but basically what we've created is a tool path that doesn't take as much off. And that's what happens when you simulate it. So now I've created two tool paths. So I'll output those, and then we'll take those tool paths out to the machine, and we'll, we're gonna actually run the fly new because we're gonna prepare a brand new spoil board. The first step is to position the MDF sheet against the part locator pins. If your machine doesn't have pins, try to center the sheet over the vacuum zones. Turn on the vacuum, make sure all the zones are turned on. Touch the fly cutting tool to the surface of the MDF. Normally we don't use the too hot switch because of the size of the tool. Okay, set the Z0 height. Then you wanna set the origin, which is the XY0. If your machine has part locator pins, you can type in G53XY and it hit enter and it will go over to uh, the corner of the sheet. Then set XY0 as that position. Load the fly new program we just created. Verify that the toolpath is correct on the screen. Execute the program. For reference, we're making cuts at 400 inches per minute. Clear any excess dust. Flip the MDF panel and position it against the part locator pins. Turn on the vacuum. Touch off the fly cutter to the MDF surface once again and set Z0. Then load the fly new program. Verify the toolpath is correct on the screen. Execute the program. Now, it's not a bad idea to actually treat the edge, edges on these because you can get vacuum leakage there. And I typically use a piece of paraffin. That's the simplest that I rub on the edge that plugs the edges up and that seals them. Now, it's good practice when you're finished using your MDF spoil board to cover it with panel materials to keep the surface of the spoil board from absorbing moisture and eventually cupping. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Flow through fixturing is a wonderful process for CNC routing. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you need more information, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.